Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, Mark chapter 14, verse 26 is where we resume our study today. Mark 14, 26. You can study all of God's Word with me, just like we're going to do today at the Scripture Verse by Verse website. And that is found at the Bible verse by verse dot com. There you will find four complete series, going on five, series going through the Bible, every single verse of Holy Scripture, all archived. All you have to do is choose, click, and listen. All you ever need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. And you can spend the rest of your life studying God's Word right there. Because, and I know what I'm talking about because it took me 37 years to go through the Bible four times, going on five. And it's all there. Again, that's at the Bible, verse by verse. Dot com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Mark 14, 26. And when they had sung in him, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus and his 11 apostles. Judas walked out. Didn't say anything. Went to find the religious rulers to tell them where they could find Jesus to arrest him. But this is the place where the Garden of Gethsemane was. This is the place where Jesus will pray in the victory on this Holy Thursday. This is where he will pray and pray and win the victory and get faith and courage to proceed with the cross. That's something that prayer does for us. Prayer is talking to God and I find that as years go on, not that the words that we use are not important. They are because the Bible says we have not because we ask not. But at the same time, there is value in just the process of prayer because you're spending time with God. You're talking to God and that will all by itself strengthen your faith give you spiritual courage to do what God wants you to do. There are so many benefits to prayer. In verse 27, And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. In other words, Jesus says, you are going to stumble in your faith because of me tonight. He says that, he's talking about when he is arrested, they're all going to take off and run on him. Verse 28, But after I am raised up, I will go before you into Galilee. Jesus says, after warning them, telling them what's going to happen. He says, but this is not the last chapter. Because when you take off, yes, it will be a failure on your part. But it's not over. Because I will meet you after I am raised. Talking about after being raised from the dead. So what he is saying 
is that the bad times will pass and they will be replaced by good times. Very bad times will be replaced by very good times. And Jesus assures them that even though he will be gone from them, taken away, crucified, a horrible death, he assures them that they will be fellowshipping together in the future. And Jesus wanted the apostles to know this so that if they believe his word, then they can hang on to it and find courage to endure the bad times which they are about to be hit with. And you and I, as Christians, need to believe God's promises and his word so that we can endure the hard times that we will inevitably face in this world. Not just the hard times that come to everybody in general, but the hard times that come from being faithful to Jesus. You got to believe the word of God. Believe that better times are coming. Don't believe that joker in Texas who says these are your best days now. They probably are for him. But they aren't for people who are saved and go to heaven. Your best days are ahead of you. 29. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. In other words, Peter says that everybody else is going to stumble. I get that, Jesus. I can see that. Everybody else is going to stumble and take off on you, Jesus. I, I understand that, but not me. You're right about the other ten, but not about me. Peter was so sure of himself. The first step in a spiritual fall occurs when you are too sure of yourself. The first step in a spiritual fall is when you have a wonderful self-image, which is what so many modern evangelical preachers so-called, and pastors, so-called, and of course the psychologist, teaches so essential. Makes me nauseous to listen to modern evangelicals talk about self-love, self-esteem, self-worth, and how important it is, and try to tell me that they can't serve God unless they love themselves more. Boy, did they buy the devil's lie, hook, line, and sinker. The Bible doesn't teach self-love other than the fact that we already have it. It's a given. But then when you focus on love and self-esteem and self-worth and self-assurance, take heed if you think ye stand lest you fall. That's exactly what's going to happen with Peter. The guy is brimming with self-assurance, self-esteem. His cup is running over. And he's about to fall flat on his face as a result of it. 30. And Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, This day, even in this night, before the cock crows twice, Thou shalt deny me thrice. So Jesus tells Peter, he sets him straight in a hurry. Tells Peter, you're not only going to deny me like the rest of these fellas. You're not only going to deny me once like they will. You're going to actually deny me three times and you're going to do it before this night 
is over. 31. But he spoke the more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any way. Likewise also said they all. So they're all in the same boat, actually. Peter is a little more vocal. But they're all filled with self-esteem and self-worth and self-assurance. They all insisted that they weren't going to deny Jesus and run off. Of course, they were basically telling Jesus that he was wrong. After being with him over three years, day and night, they should know better than to say, Jesus, you are wrong. But that's what they're saying. So another step to a spiritual fall is to not believe the word of God. Because when you doubt the word of God, you are wide open to sin. Why do you think the very first thing that Satan did in the very first temptation was to try to get Eve to doubt God's word? And as, she, as soon as she started to doubt God's word, he had her. And it was a small step to his spiritual fall after that. 32. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. So when they get to Gethsemane, Jesus prayed. He needed to talk to the Father. He took his apostles because he wanted his friends to be close to him on this night. 33, and he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly amazed and to be very depressed. Sore amazed, meaning that Jesus was struck with terror. It also means to be very heavy, meaning he was in deep distress. Terror, distress, probably like no human being has ever felt. And Jesus wanted his closest friends, Peter, James, and John, to be with him during this most sorrowful night of all. Jesus is under a lot of pressure because he knows what is coming. 34. And saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. Jesus tells them to stay with him. He doesn't want to be alone. You know, if it was not for the grace of God and an angelic helper and our Lord's prayers in the garden of Gethsemane, then the pressure that he was feeling could possibly have killed him even before he got to the cross and the plan of salvation would have ended right there. Because even Jesus said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. This was more pressure than I think any man ever felt because no man was ever as pure as Jesus and no man was ever about to take on the sins of the entire human race. But God used an angel to strengthen him. And that and Jesus' prayers got him through. Now, we'll pick it up next time in verse 45 because we're going to see Jesus in action praying. Don't miss it next time. In the meantime, remember, you can study God's Word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. All four series plus the fifth. It's all there for you. All you have to do is choose, click, and listen. If you want to be a part of this ministry that has never watered down a single solitary verse in 37 years, you can be. Be a part of something good for God, something holy, something completely word-focused, never, ever anything else, never will be. You can be a part of this ministry by praying for me and God's word. In fact, do it right now while it's fresh in your mind.
pray for me in God's word, and then do it again later when you think about it. That makes you a part of this ministry. I can't tell you how much your prayers mean to me. And then also when you take a break from studying with me at the Bible, verse by verse dot com, go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead because that also makes you a part of this ministry. So thank you for studying with me. See you next time. So long.